Aaron, talk a little bit about, I know you've done some interesting research on this in particular, but the, 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 the concept of viewability and its uh, influence in terms of performance of what you're seeing in terms of the effectiveness of your campaigns. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? I think we have a slide. Is there a sure. slide that you, uh, we sure. can throw up here? Absolutely. So, you know, the idea of just even, like I said, technically being able to measure viewability of online ads started in the, the, the display space where um, the original kind of measurement techniques were capable of going out and understanding the MRC uh, standard is uh, half of the pixels of an ad on screen for at least one second. And so we were, I, I would say we were probably pretty early adopters of putting that measurement capability on all of our campaigns and just said, well, we want to understand this and we want to see if we can drive improvements. Um, even well before the MRC would have said, let's all trade as a currency on viewability, we knew that we, we could probably spend our money smarter, right? And so we did that over um, at least a year's time, you know, all of 2012 and, and all of 2013, we've tracked display viewability. And we wanted to go back and see, okay, we fundamentally we believe that there's a lot of value in an impression being viewable versus not do we really see that play out yeah and Kellogg runs market mix modelings like uh, most big CPGs will run their mixed models to understand the the effectiveness of their advertising in this case effectiveness is uh, very simply defined as the number of boxes of frosted flakes driven off of a shelf per impression I put into the marketplace and so when we did a meta analysis of all of our digital campaigns for over a 12 month period and we said well let's just start at at least 50% in view for a campaign that was at least 50% in view let's call that benchmark and that's you know the first bar up there the 100% index and then if I got more restricted and I said okay what about all the campaigns that are at least 55% you see an 18% increase in effectiveness 65% is 41% all the way up to if we could get up to 70% in view then we had a 68% more effective campaign, which was really, you know, on one hand it was kind of a no-brainer, but on the other hand it was fascinating because we, it's the first time that we really put a dollar value behind mm -hmm. viewability. What's it worth to us? And, you know, like I said, regardless of whether we're trading on a viewable currency or not, we know how important it is to, to get those ads in view. And, and we believe that video is going to be the same way we would expect to see actually you know you think about video the the potential that video has for driving volume is, is significantly higher than display um, and also the fact that video has not been measured as long you know yeah. the moats and, and other solutions of the world are just becoming available um, so we, we see tremendous upside potential there I mean this is the first research I've seen that's really kind of connecting the dots between sales and viewability. So it's a proxy metric, right, when you think about Absolutely. this. What's interesting is, I'm, I'm curious, how are you putting this into practice today? What, what, how are you using that, that, that data? Yeah, so we, we have some very strong partnerships um, in the programmatic space particularly, and um, we, in, in, in kind of in partnership with our agency, we're very much on top of, I guess, on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis, the performance of our campaigns. We have very clear set of KPIs, and all of our partners are very aware of what our KPIs are. It starts with viewability. That would be, you know, groundwork. Um, and while programmatic is enabling the real-time optimization of a metric like viewability there's still some there's still some some human involvement at times right yeah. going in and making uh, we're finding low-hanging fruit almost instantaneously when we started to apply viewability to video advertising it was an immediate um, kind of opportunity space to say oh wow you know here's a here's a campaign the the the, the key difference we look at today is Completion rate would have been a success factor in the past, right? We want to get to completion. Uh, today, we want to look at is the video audible and viewable on completion? And it's really fascinating when you look at those two metrics side by side and you start to see, wow, you know, a, 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 a publisher, a domain that I would have previously considered a very uh, effective domain at a, a high completion rate, maybe they have a 20% audible vid visible on completion. I need to optimize you know, out of that and into the places where I, where I see that audible visible uh, being higher. I think this naturally sort of you know, leads to the conversation about what does viewability actually mean, right? Um, so I mean, I, I, Jonah and you and I have been involved in, um, in with working with the IAB and the MRC and the part of the Emerging Innovation Task Force around defining those standards. And I think we've netted out now, they, you know, they, they lifted the advisory last month and I think they're giving the industry 90 days to sort of uh, uh, acclimate, but the reality is we now have a standard. It's 50% it's of uh, the, video, the video ads 
uh, viewable or pixels have to be viewable in the active viewport in the user's browser um, for two consecutive seconds in order for it to be viewable. Uh, if I got that right, that's yep. a lot to, to, to spit out in one sentence. Um, my, I got a question though. I mean, this is a question I hear all the time from clients and from agencies. Why would an ad not be viewable? So I'm going to throw that to you, John. Yeah, so it's a good, it's a good question and, and I, I just want to add to what Aaron said. So Aaron was showing really good information on why viewability matters from a financial standpoint. Let's zoom out for a second. And to, to use an analogy we've talked about, if you walk into a store and you say, I'll take a dozen donuts, and they hand you a box and it has six in it, you look at the box and you give it back to the guy and say, give me my other six. And he says, well, you have to pay more to get the other six. And you say, well, I bought a dozen. It doesn't make sense, right? Viewability is, is not a, it's not a, hey, how good of a person was it that I reached? It's literally, was the ad there or not, right? If you go into Midtown Manhattan or Times Square, you bought a billboard and you walk into Times Square and the billboard's not there, it's not a question of what's the effectiveness of it not being there, it's physically not there. So the real question though ultimately is why are videos not viewable? And I think this goes back to the consumption experience in digital being a little bit different or at the very least more trackable than in TV. So if you think about when I go to watch a, a, a TV episode, right, you go to watch your favorite show online, you click play, what happens? It'll typically say, all right, playing an ad, playing one out of two, one out of three, one out of five. What I do as a consumer is I go open another tab. I go check my email. I go do other stuff until my content comes on. When I do that, that ad's not viewable. I'm out of focus. I'm not in the tab where the video's playing. Therefore, it's not there, right? So there's reasons why just in normal consumer practice from being distracted that you're not gonna see the video. So that's probably the simplest one. I think there's other reasons that are, you know, this whole rise of, of bots and nefarious sort of uh, strategies is something that's real and it's something that we're seeing. And so there, there are things that people do in the display world uh, and there are things that people do in the video world that's unethical, illegal, and, and wrong. And it's causing things like bad viewability is sort of one output of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Aaron, did you have something you want to say? Yeah, no, I, I mean, the only thing I would say is, you know, I would kind of add to you, you very eloquently went through the whole MRC definition, I think, of viewability. <laughs> From a brand standpoint, um, what's really interesting to us is, you know, that's great. And um, actually, I was with David Gunsworth from MRC a couple weeks ago and said, hey, great, we're all very happy, we're going to have a standard on viewability. But that's just the beginning for us as yep. an advertiser to think about, was it on screen for two seconds or more? Um, typically two seconds of my video is not going to get across my message um, and so that what we're looking at now goes well beyond just was it technically viewable to you know how much was it viewed and where do I get to Jonah's point the most sort of engagement and to total best experience for a consumer with that ad where I'm going to have the highest likelihood to have an impact with that consumer as an advertiser. I want to talk a little bit, uh, uh, this is I think a really important point and, and you know, we talk about measurement. Um, talk a little about your philosophy here and specifically around you know, why is independent measurement important? Oh, absolutely, sure. Uh, and I think Todd very, very well addressed this this morning. Uh, we've always fundamentally believed, yes, we want third-party independent measurement uh, for, for everything we do. Um, one very, very simple reason, I've had some conversations recently about this, is obviously as a large advertiser, we work with, with lots of companies. We work with probably many of you in the room. We work with lots of publishers, lots of pro programmatic platforms, etc. And if each one of those partners said, you know what, we're going to develop our own measurement capability. Yeah. Don't worry about it. And in fact, we'll make it free. And, and we hear that quite often. We're going to develop our own. It'll be free. A um, little bit of the chicken in the hen house, to be honest, right? It's like, okay, well, you know, what faith do I have in that? And then all of a sudden, like, the, the bigger issue to me becomes what's true north in this world where every platform begins to measure itself? Uh, I, I now I'm, I'm not sure, like, okay, I hear you're 80% viewable, but do I know that that's really 80%? Do I have confidence in yeah. that, right? And uh, to us, I think that's the main issue is like, we want a true north that right or wrong, we're going to stick to. I think the greatest thing about running that meta analysis on viewability, in the early days, we had a lot of pushback. Wow, viewability, that technology is not quite fully baked yet. And, you know, do you really believe that? And I was able to step back and say, you know what, guys? I don't know if it's 100% accurate, but I do know that as those numbers go up, my numbers go up, my yep. sales numbers go up, right? So I, 
I'm pretty confident in it. I feel great about it, right? And so to us, that's the importance of an independent third-party measurement is to have that true north that we can have confidence in uh, across everything we do.